What's happening, y'all? Man, it's about cool here. Real quick. Patreon.com backslash man, about cool. That's patreon.com backslash M-A-N-S-A-B-A-K-H-U. That's where you can get exclusive content from me, long form lessons and lectures, things that we really dive into, things that blow your mind, things that open your first eye. IG, Facebook, at Mansabaku, Vero, that's V-E-R-O dot C-O backslash Mansabaku. Steel Dog Boot Camp, catch it on YouTube every Monday at 1245. Oh, Murder Black, the podcast, that's for your mind and your soul. Your physical, your body, that's Steel Dog Boot Camp. Again, Mondays, 1245, YouTube. Like, share, subscribe. What up, family? I am Mansa Baku. Welcome to Mansa Makes Sense. A 10 to 15 minute pod, something real quick to provide you with instant reaction, immediate feedback, my quick takes and responses to important and noteworthy happenings in news, sports and culture. So quickly, I want to react to something. I'm going to try not to let this upset me. There are some out here saying that. When LeBron passes Kareem and points this season. When he passes Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, some believe it'll be around the all-star break around February, March, that in a magical David Copperfield, Chris Angel sort of way, LeBron will propel himself past Michael Jordan in terms of the greatest of all time. I want to be clear, indubitably clear. Whatever LeBron does this season, next season, the season after that, or the season after that, it will not move the needle one iota in terms of what LeBron can do to catch Mike. Whatever he does this season will not change anything. He will still be firmly behind Mike, and it is only debatable if you are a LeBron stan, if you are a LeBron fanatic. This has nothing to do with being a Michael Jordan fan, but in full disclosure, I prefer Mike over LeBron for reasons I'll get into shortly. LeBron is number two right now on the scoring list with 37,062 points. He's 1,325 behind Kareem, but I want to make a point. I will use Carl Malone to do so. Carl Malone sits at number three with 36,928 points. He's 4,636 points ahead of Michael Jordan, who is number five with 32,292 points. Again, Carl Malone, the mailman. We know him from Utah with John Stockton. They ran the pick and roll like no others. He is number three behind Kareem, LeBron, then Carl. He has 36,928 points. He's two spaces ahead of Mike because Kobe is number four. So Carl Malone is two spaces ahead of Mike in terms of points because Mike only has 32,292. Does anyone on earth think Carl Malone is better than Michael Jordan? I'll wait. Nobody. Plus, Mike never got anywhere near Kareem's point total. And did that ever affect his status as the GOAT? No. So why would LeBron passing Kareem make any difference in his status as the number two GOAT, which many believe? Now, in my personal opinion, LeBron is number three. He's number three to me based on the best I've ever seen play with my own eyes. So with all due respect to Kareem, Dr. J, Moses, Wilt, Russell, Oscar, you know, among many countless others. In my top five, I go like this, Jordan. That's it. Or anybody who is of my generation, those of us in our 30s, those of us in our 40s. And I'll even put those in their early 50s. I'm pretty sure they can they remember. Or at least they should remember because that that would make them peers of Michael Jordan. So, yeah, 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 y'all should remember if y'all in y'all 50s. But if you saw Michael Jordan play with your own eyes, the game winners. 
the style, the grace, the footwork, the handle, the hang time. If we're being honest, we've never seen anything else like that. I, being a representative of my, of my generation, feel confident in saying that Michael Jordan was what we all sought to achieve playing basketball. Number two was the closest thing we've ever seen to Michael Jordan, Kobe. Kobe copied Mike word for word. Kobe did the best plagiarism tactic in basketball history. And what's crazy is we love him for it. And at some point around 2009, 2010, when Kobe won his first championship without Shaq, Kobe became his own person. And we started to love Kobe for Kobe. Number three is LeBron. LeBron is the best all around player when you consider passing, scoring, defense in his early years. He's the best all around player. So I give him that longevity, too. I give him that. Got to give LeBron his longevity. He's been playing for 40 years. Shaq is my number four, the most dominant player ever. I was a senior in high school when Shaq and Kobe were winning their championships. My favorite player in the league at the time was Allen Iverson. So in 01, when AI met Shaq and Kobe in the, in the championship, oh, it was real. And I saw firsthand what Shaq did to the Philadelphia 76ers. So again, these are the best players I've seen with my own eyes. And, num and number five, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan was just fundamentally sound. Tim Duncan is the quintessential player that when you say, I want to construct a team I know can win against anyone, you pick Tim Duncan. Back to my point. LeBron has lost too much to be considered on Michael Jordan level. LeBron has lost too much to be in the same conversation with Michael Jordan. Not to mention they're two different animals. We're talking players on two different levels. LeBron isn't anywhere near Mike in terms of killer instinct. Mike wanted to kill you. Mike wanted to make you tap out. Mike was out there playing MMA, but basketball. You see what I'm saying? Mike was out there doing things to you on the basketball court that you just had no answer for. Not to say LeBron isn't, or not to say LeBron hasn't, but not at the level of Michael Jordan. Mike's graceful style. I would say Mike had the prettiest game we've ever seen. And then Mike's cultural impact. We're still paying comical amounts of money for Jordan retros. Who out here looking for LeBron shoes? And don't act like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hating on LeBron. It ain't nothing about that. Go look up the number. Go look up the figures. Mike makes $132 million a year with Jordans. LeBron makes $32 million a year. One more time. Jordan's $132 million a year. LeBron's $32 million a year. $32 million a year. That's a $100 million different difference. Space Jam. Jordan's version. It was a mainstay in the 90s. I'm not saying it was a, a theatrical masterpiece, but what I'm saying is the kids of that generation in the 90s, oh, we love Space Jam. LeBron Space Jam, well, according to ScreenRent.com, it has little, if any, chance of becoming a cult classic like the original. More importantly, today's kids don't even care about LeBron doing a Space Jam because they didn't grow up with Looney Tunes like we did. Many of the kids today don't even know about the first Space Jam. So LeBron doing a Space Jam 2, a new legacy, it was a fool's errand. But anyway, back to my point, how many more games has LeBron played than Mike? LeBron has played to date 1,366 games. Jordan has played 1,072 games. LeBron has played 294 more games than Mike, which is the same as three and a half more basketball seasons. So I want to ask this. If Mike played as many games as, as LeBron, I don't think anyone would argue that Mike would probably have already passed Kareem by this point. And low management has made comparisons between this generation and the past generation. It's foolish. LeBron has been cherry picking the games he's been playing in since he had that, that leg injury when he first got to the Lakers. Contrast this against the 2002-2003 season when Michael Jordan was 40 years old playing for the Washington Wizards. Mike played every game, all 82 games at 40 years old. What are we talking about? And Mike was the only player on that Wizards team 
who played all 82 games. Shaq has been on the record of saying it doesn't change anything for him if LeBron passes Kareem. He played against both Mike and LeBron and then played with LeBron. But I want to put a bow on it. There is nothing LeBron can do to catch Mike, period. LeBron has lost in the finals too much. He has lost to the Dallas Mavericks in 2011. He lost two NBA finals to Tim Duncan and the Spurs. And then he lost three more finals to Golden State, Steph and the boys. He got swept in 2007 against the Spurs. And then he got swept in 2017 against Golden State. Mike lost in the finals to absolutely nobody. This is Mansa Baku, y'all. I don't tell you what you want to hear. I tell you what you need to hear. Thanks for listening. See you next time. This episode is brought to you by Baku Olo Rooms Omerta Black Voodoo, a novel about love, loyalty, and legacy. Jacob Playaway is an unabashed writer who tells the truth about the history of his people. And for it, he has to evade the structure's insubordinate agitator stamp, which would mark him as a dead man. It just so happens that he is also the orchestrator of a cryptic order, an outlaw outfit known as the fam. He and his brothers belong to something. Everyone has an assignment and no one violates the code. They have a custom of respect, a small nation that furnishes its own doctrine of justice, retribution and shameless pursuits of happiness. While Jacob tries to keep one half of his life in urban legend, if not a complete secret altogether, His other half meets an eccentric voodoo priestess who takes him on an unexpected spiritual journey. Omerta Black Voodoo, available on Amazon. Get your copy today.